Hi there, welcome to what is happening in Brazil. My name is Pamela Oliveira and I am back to bring you the latest news from the country. Businessman Luciano Hang, one of President Jair Bolsonaro's biggest supporters, spent two days hospitalized with COVID-19. In a live stream from hospital, the entrepreneur said he had been taking hydroxychloroquine and the dewormer ivermectin in order to protect himself from the disease, though there is no scientific confirmation of these medications' efficacy in preventing or treating COVID-19. Since the start of the pandemic, Jair Bolsonaro has defended their use. The Ministry of Health went as far as recommending the use of these medications that have no proven efficacy. On January 20th, the National Health Council asked the Bolsonaro government to withdraw all documents that suggest the use of preemptive treatments against COVID-19. The very week in which Brazil kicked off its national immunization plan, the country ran out of the raw materials needed to produce new doses. The two vaccines that have been approved for use in Brazil, the Chinese-made CoronaVac and the Oxford vaccine, both need a Chinese-made ingredient called active pharmaceutical ingredient. According to the Chinese embassy in Brazil, the hindrances to shipping the material are technical, not political, despite the tension between the two countries. High-ranking Brazilian officials and congressman Eduardo Bolsonaro, who is the president's son, have repeatedly attacked China throughout the pandemic, going as far as calling the novel coronavirus the communist virus or the Chinese virus. The healthcare system in the city of Manaus, the state capital of Amazonas, has collapsed due to the second wave of coronavirus infections. Hospitals in the city were left without oxygen. Nurses and doctors report seeing patients dying of asphyxiation. The scenes shocked the world. There was a lack of oxygen, a basic hospital supply in many healthcare units in the Amazonas state capital of Manaus. According to the main oxygen supplier in the state, before the spike in COVID-19 hospitalizations, the daily average consumption of oxygen was between 15 and 17,000 cubic meters. However, demand has greatly increased and reached a peak of 76,000 cubic meters in a single day. Due to this shortage, coronavirus patients who were severely ill had to be transferred to other states. For this epidemiologist, the crisis could have been avoided. The Amazonas state government, obviously represented by the governor, admits that he had been monitoring many indicators, including oxygen consumption. Therefore, they had been monitoring the situation for more than two or three weeks. They knew we would be likely be reaching capacity like we did. And this is something that needs to be investigated by the Justice Department. The height of the crisis was January 14th, when hospitals announced they no longer had any oxygen available. Family members began frantically searching for oxygen cylinders that saw a spike in prices. Carla, who at the time was with her hospitalized uncle, tells of the difficulties she had in guaranteeing her family member received treatment. We never thought we would live through this. Lots of people looking for cylinders for purchase, companies raising prices to absurd levels. An oxygen cylinder that worth 600 reais shot up to 6,000 reais. Think about how many families couldn't afford to buy one. It's very expensive. The crisis in Manaus is happening at a time when the Brazilian medical regulatory body approved two vaccines for use in the country, CoronaVac and Oxford AstraZeneca. For Aureliana, vaccination should be followed up by other efforts in the healthcare sector. I would prioritize the reinstallation of field hospitals in Manaus. I would prioritize strengthening Manaus hospital infrastructure. I would prioritize the betterment of the pandemic response in Manaus, because the problem lies with the Amazon's public health system and not with the states that are taking in these patients. Now let's head to the island of Itamaracá, located in the state of Pernambuco and where a mother and daughter duo are building their own home using glass bottles that were discarded in nature. The trash thrown on the beaches, swamps and streets of Itamaracá Island are the materials used in the construction of this home, known as the House of Salt. The dwelling is built from more than 5,000 glass bottles. The idea was conceived when a mother and her daughter could no longer afford to live in the house they rented. In the two years that we've been here, we see the lack of care with the trash situation. At first, there is the need to have a home, really. And secondly, there is this lack of care with the environment. 
such a beautiful beach, such a beautiful place, but the preservation and care for the beach is very precarious. People throw out their trash anywhere. In six months, half the house was built. Edna and Gabriele worked hard in the construction, but also counted on the community's help. The roof was built by a group we would gather here, our friends and neighbors, because we wouldn't have been able to handle it ourselves. The flowering too. It's a principle of bioconstruction, eco-design and redesign also, reutilizing and resigning meaning. And also it comes with the knowledge that the Brazilian black community is directly affected by environmental problems. After we began building our house here, we started seeing that the environmental issue is not just environmental, it is also social environmental. For example, the people that are affected by disasters like a lack of basic sanitation and the health crisis, they have a certain color. And now it's time for Brazilianism. This dish is made with dried goat meat, milk puree and corn vinaigrette using ingredients that come from right here in Bahia. Here we'll cut out a piece of steak. To grill the meat, we're gonna use the traditional liquid butter, known as bottled butter. For our puree, we will heat up this milk. To give it scent, we will use crushed garlic with the skin and all, two cloves of it. I will add rosemary from the Kachinga region here with the garlic. This scented milk goes back into the pan. We will then add the manioc flour a little bit at a time. I will add semi-cured cheese to wrap things up and a little more bottled butter. The vinaigrette is really simple. The corn is already cooked, a little bit of purple onions and cilantro, which is ever-present in dishes from Bahia. I will add a little bit of chili peppers. In this mixture, I will also add vinegar and olive oil. Like to do the show? So hit the like button and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to receive notifications. We'll see you next week.